Hi, everyone. This is Jill. Welcome to the podcast. Last week, we talked about what you can do to prepare for the next day being amazing. Today, we'll talk about what you can do yet today. Someday is today. Random Northwoods billboard. Last week, we had advice about what you can do to make tomorrow great. Today, we'll wrap up the series with what you can do to still make today great. These are pieces of advice that will help you have a great day. Step that you can do when trying to prepare for your day is make sure that you go to everything early. A lot of people show up for everything late, and it causes a lot of stress and anxiety. When I first got my job and I was going towards my very first plane trip, I was already stressed out enough about flying, about being in this new company, about going to a conference with people I didn't really know. And you know what I did? I ended up showing up at the airport late. And I didn't realize how long it would take me to actually park my car. And by the time I got to the gate, I was nervous. I was stressed out. I was having flop sweat. And when I got to the gate, I had to board immediately because I was one of the last people there. And I promised myself at that point, I was never going to do that again. It wrecked my whole day. I felt terrible and jittery the whole flight to North Carolina. And it just made something that was already really stressful for me even more stressful. So now I show up early for my flights and people laugh at me because I'm wasting 15 minutes or I'm wasting 20 minutes. But you know what? Being there early and not having any of that stress is worth every minute. I feel good. I'm there. I'm prepared. And I'm not late. And that's not just with plane flights. That's just with everything. I notice a lot of times that people who get crazy on the road, it's because they're late. It's because they had a dentist appointment or a dog vet appointment or a dinner date with someone and they're late. And suddenly they're stressed out. They're driving down the road way too fast. They're driving dangerously because they're trying to zip in out of traffic. When if they had just left five minutes earlier, their whole evening would have gone better. So make sure that you leave for whatever it is you're going to early so that you can have a great day. Make sure that you remember not to multitask. When you actually sit down and you write down all the things that you need to get done that day, make sure you do them one at a time. You will get those things done a lot faster if you're not trying to jump from thing to thing to thing and lose your focus every time. Someone said that when you change your focus on a topic of what you're working on, it takes you up to 20 minutes to get back into the groove of what you're doing. Try to arrange minor tasks for you to do the next day. And they might be little things like scheduling a time for your dog to go see the vet or that you wanted to call a friend and set up a lunch with someone you hadn't seen in a while. But make sure that you don't just write down the big things that you want to do in your life. Make sure that you set up these small tasks that you want to do that you can get done in the nooks and crannies of your day. One of the things I found helpful to me was that I came up with small kitchen cleaning tasks that I could do every time I'm going to cook a meal. So my lunch is in the microwave. I'm going to wipe up this countertop. But they're all so small and they're so tiny that it allows me to actually keep my kitchen clean without setting time aside to keep my kitchen clean. But this works for everything. Sometimes I just set everything I need to take upstairs next to my steps. So the next time I go upstairs, I can quick grab it and take it up there. Then when it's up there, it's easy for me to put away. But don't forget that while you're planning your big tasks, to set up tiny little tasks that will just make your day better and keep you from doing the things that aren't very much fun without setting time aside for them. I find this helpful. It's not always easy for people to do, but at some point I got to inbox zero. Yep, that's right. I don't have emails in my inbox waiting for me. As soon as the task is done, I put that email away into another subfolder. And that's really hard to do, but the best way that you can do to get there is, first of all, when you respond to people, keep the email short. If you keep the email short, it won't take you long to reply to some of the emails. Make sure that anything that's a task gets added to a task list or written down somewhere so that you know that you have to do them. 
And then at the end of every day of work, go through the messages that are still in your inbox and clean them out. Does it mean you have to send a quick email? Does it mean that you have to set a reminder to respond to someone tomorrow? But do your best to make sure that your inbox at work or your inbox at home is either empty or well-maintained so that when you get to work the next day, it's not all full of clutter. Get rid of the things that really annoy you about your workspace or your living space at your home. For example, if you never seem to be able to find some place to put your pens, go get yourself a pen cup. If you can't ever find a pen when you need one and you're writing yourself a quick note, go get a pen. Make sure it always stays in that exact spot. Or maybe if this is your home and you have a chair and maybe you hate this chair and you sit in it every day, maybe it's time to get a new chair that would actually be comfortable. Or if you say, I never really have a good place to put my drink. I'm always afraid I'm going to swivel around and knock it off. Spend some time in getting rid of those minor annoyances. Once you have your workspace, your living space set up so that it actually helps you do better throughout the day, maybe it's your car. Maybe you drive around and you deliver things. Organize it in such a way that it makes your life that much better. Learn your software. This is a good one. Because a lot of times we're using tools at work and sometimes it's software, sometimes it's the computer. But if you take that extra step of learning how your computer actually works or learning how to do something in the software you have to do, it will help you actually get your work done easier. I know that I tend to be that person who tries to learn all the software tricks I can think of. Maybe the keyboard commands. If I'm looking in Office and I need to find something, I know off the top of my head that control F or command F is the way to find those things. And so I'm not looking through my menu items, trying to find how to find something. I know exactly where it is. I also know all the shortcuts that makes my day easier. My whole job is teaching people how to use a piece of software and I teach them how to use it the best way they can because I know that if they enjoy using the software, they're going to be more likely to use it. But I also use that trick on myself. Because if I actually spend just a little bit of time understanding how I can get something that takes me a little bit of time and get it done more quickly, I will enjoy my day better. I will get things done faster. And I won't be spending all my time fiddling around with something that could just be quick. Make sure you put everything you need right by the door. I often forget things that I need to take. Whether it's a jacket or something simple I need, it's easy to forget. And it's easy to leave something at home. So one of the things I try to do is take everything that's either going to go with me to work or if I'm going to go camping or if I'm going to go and have an adventure that day, everything I need is sitting right there by the door. And I also have a write on wipe off board right by my door that I write down anything that may be in the refrigerator or can't be by the door. So I always try to make sure that everything I need is right there and waiting to go with me. Make sure that you do things with the people you love doing things with, that they're good people, they have a great outlook on life, and they make you feel better. Sometimes there's people in our lives that just don't make us feel very good. Make sure you find the people that actually bring you up, cheer you up, and help you take a new perspective in life and spend time with them. Make sure you find something that you enjoy doing and do it every day. Some days are a slog and some days aren't very much fun. But if there's something that you enjoy doing and something that you really want to do, there's things we have to do every day. But make sure that you do something that you like every day. Maybe it's reading a book. Maybe it's watching an episode of your favorite show. Or maybe it's playing Oculus for a few minutes every day. Make sure you get that in. It's important for you to enjoy your day. Watch out for social media. I admit I'm not the biggest fan of social media that's out there. And a lot of people talk about how social media really damages things. You have to realize that the algorithms that run all the different types of social media are there to get a reaction out of you. They actually sell advertising based on the reaction it will have from you. So does an advertiser maybe advertising something political want you to see the ad when you're upset? Or maybe the advertiser wants you to see something when you're nervous. Maybe it's a security tool. 
There's ways of selling advertising to get to those moods. The social media outlets that are out there are there to manipulate you, basically, to buy something, to like something, or sometimes to just be at odds with each other. I wonder if we really would be at odds with each other as much if we didn't have these tools that were out there trying to make us fight with each other. But the whole system of the algorithm is set up to make sure that we're having a feeling it wants us to feel, whether it's anxiety, fear, or dislike of the other person. It's not really great for us. People do doom scrolling where they just keep scrolling through a particular type of social media. It's not healthy for us. Sometimes when we see pictures of other people, we know they're fake. That person doesn't have the life that they portray on Facebook. And if you find yourself getting stressed out, if you find yourself feeling bad after you see a particular person's posts, it's usually easy inside of social media to hide someone's posts. I know that there was someone in my life that was posting things that made me kind of angry on a day-to-day basis, and I didn't want to be angry with them. I didn't want to dislike them based on the way they were treating people in their social media. So I turned on a setting so I don't really see their posts very often. Or get rid of social media for a couple of days. I know someone who goes on a 30-day social media vacation. They don't leave their house, but for 30 days, they take off Facebook, Instagram, all the social media things off their phone, off their computer, so they don't look at them so they can get that grounding again from reality. I think that's pretty hard to do, but they felt that it was important for their psychological well-being so they didn't see all the different things that social media tries to do to us. Everybody is different. And so if you don't plan your day in a way that makes it useful to you, it's going to be a long day. If you're not someone who's great in the morning, don't put all your meetings in the morning. If you're someone who's an introvert, don't pack your day with being with people all day long. Or if you're an extrovert, make sure you find time to be with other people and get a social hit from all the other people around you. But just remember that when you start seeing all these different books and all these different plans that tell you how to have your best day ever, they are writing it for a very specific kind of person. They're they're sort of writing it for themselves. And you'll see it a lot of times where people will say, well, in order to have a successful day, you have to get up at five in the morning and exercise. You know what would make my day worse? Getting up at five in the morning and exercising. That would make my day awful. I would hate it. I'd feel terrible all day long and it wouldn't help me do any of my goals. I'd be dragging the rest of the day and not enjoying it. So that person thinks they found the secret to life, the universe and everything when instead they just sort of figure it out themselves. It's great to listen to other people about what kind of days they have, but to make your next day great, make sure the day looks like you. Make sure you eat well. This is kind of a funny one because we always think about eating healthy because we know that if we eat healthy and we exercise, we'll have more energy the next day, that same day. Eating healthy doesn't make you tired. It actually invigorates you so that you can get more things done. But also think not just about the healthy aspects of it, but think about how you feel after eating it. Sometimes if you get a list of the things that make you feel good and the things that don't make you feel so good about when it comes to eating or drinking things, it can help you have a better day the next day. I find that I don't feel great when I eat spicy foods. I like some spicy foods, but my whole night doesn't go well, my day doesn't go well, I don't feel great. So I always try to set up my next day with the meals that's going to make me feel better. Things that are light enough to eat so I don't feel groggy, things that are the right level of spice so I don't feel sick to my stomach, and things that I'm even excited about. If I don't really like the lunch I'm eating, I might not be excited enough to eat it. I might really dread it. And it doesn't give me that nice mental break. It's not just the negative things. It's also finding the things you enjoy eating so that when you have your lunchtime or your break time, you're excited to eat them. You're looking forward to it. So picking out those very special meals will help your next day go better. And today's entertainment advice of the week comes from The Incredibles. This is a hobo suit, darling. Oh, you can't be seen in this. I won't allow it. Years ago, 
me but now what do you mean you designed it i never look back darling. it distracts from the now that's right don't dwell in the past and think about the things that already happened if it's going to mess up your future or muddle your today focus on the now once you've learned the lessons of yesterday already one thanks so much for listening if you have any comments, questions, or your own pieces of advice, you can email me at jill at smallstepspod.com. Have a great week.